Hi out there. Uh, welcome to our new video channel because it's the first video I'm doing in English on this channel. So a warm welcome to all of you. It's Sunday evening here in Germany and today I've chosen a kind of special place also for me. It's the old living room of my grandpa which you can see who you can see behind me and the old living room of my grandma. Uh, I'm sitting here with something special. This is also why I've decided to do the video also in English. Because last week I got the, the chance or another chance to visit Quintarelli in uh, Northern Italy, in the Veneto Valpolicella region. And to me, this is one of the most exciting wineries ever, not in sense of marketing or sense of building or anything. But it's this kind of, of silence and this kind of magic place it's to me. Uh, maybe you know Quintarelli, this is also why I'm doing the video in English, because I think Quintarelli deserves to be presented all around the world. They, they don't even got a home page, but they are doing a great job. They're only bottling 60,000 bottles a year. Really small production, but you can find them in every Italian or every good Italian restaurant. And it's like, yeah, you, you might not, like, like we as a, as a merchant, wine merchant, we might not ask them for pallets of wines. It's more about asking for like 18 bottles per bottling or per wine each time we order. So I really like it and I like the kind of wine they're doing and I like the kind of way they are living and presenting their winery. We met last week uh, Francesco, one of the sons or let's say grandsons of Beppi Quintarelli who is now also one of the guys in charge of the of the family run winery. Um, it's his brother, his father and his mother, the daughter of uh, Beppi Quintarelli. And what they are doing is, is quite special. You can see what I got now is Primo Fiore, which is like the first flower and uh, the, the basic wine, but basic wine, uh, don't be angry with me, um, is the wrong word. It's an easy bottle, not really heavy. Uh, so let's let's call it a cheap bottle, a green glass. Um, but uh, what's inside is more important. The labels, this one not of course, today they are printed, but before they were written by hand, first by the daughters of uh, Beppi Quintarelli and later by uh, a cook's friend. Um, his, his friend was a chef, had a restaurant in Verona and uh, his daughters were painting those labels. So. Uh, quite nice story behind it. Um, it's still family run as I mentioned before and what they are doing is is not doing a international style or what everybody likes but they are doing a quite classical style. Primo Fiore is 50% Cabernet and 50% Corvina and Corvinone. Of the 50% Cabernet some part is Cabernet Sauvignon and the other part is Cabernet Franc. So um, quite special style what they are presenting here. It's um, classified as an IGT uh, of Veneto. So not a Valpolicella Classico, which is the higher range. This is like the first step at Quintarelli's, but uh, still a great wine. 14 degrees of alcohol, 14%. Um, some dried grapes are used, not all of them, of course, um, but still a very special character. I think we should drink some because it's fascinating wines. If you see the color, it's, it's normal red color, not really dark, not purple. You can, th you can see through it. But uh, what you can expect always at Quintarelli is that they're doing a really, really classical style. So they are not into using grape varieties, giving too much color or just doing internationalization of the wines but doing quality, this is what they want to do with the 60,000 bottles they're producing, like their Amarone, where they are doing between six and 9,000 bottles per year, if they are doing it. If you don't get Amarone, uh, they are doing Il Rosso del Beppi, which is like, uh, let's say, the little brother of uh, the Amarone, but um, it's even, let's say, a bit wrong to say that because it's not a little brother, it's a great wine of international character. You smell it you get quite easily violets you get this kind of floral notes so quite classical for Corvina and then you get some kind of, of cherry 
the little red cherries, not too, not too dark. Show some, some black pepper also. So it's a quite wide range that you, that you smell on the nose. And you can really feel the marriage of the two, two varieties, or let's say four grape varieties used here, the two families of Cabernet and Corvina. On the palette, it changes quite a lot. You think, okay, it's not so dark in color, but on the mouth or on the palate, you get this kind of feeling of dark fruits. You get cassis, you get this kind of, of yeah, cassis black currant in English, I think. Uh, you get dark cherries, so it's changing completely. It seems to be more fruity. You don't got this kind of, of pepper that you got on the nose, but you got more of the fruit. And you can also see, I used a quite big glass because I think the Cabernet needs it. And you can see it's well structured if you look at the the viscosity, how, how it's how it's moving in the glass. So I hope you, you get once the chance to taste the Quintarelli. This is like the entry level, which is in Germany already rather or between 40 and 50 euros. So it's not that kind of cheap wine, of course, but what they are doing is really high quality work. So if you ever get the chance, try one, taste one, because it's a great job that they are doing. And I, I love to do some, yeah, some videos also for them to, to show their wines, because I think they really deserve it. I have also asked Francesco if he wants to do the video with me last week when I've visited them and he said something quite kind and nice. He said no. And I was like, what? Yeah, let's say kind of nice because uh, why do I think it's kind of nice? Because what he said afterwards, it was this or those wines are not made by me. It's made by my family, by our staff, by all of us. It's like a whole lot of bunch of people working on those wines to get this kind of quality. That's why I'm not doing a video with you on my own, just like showing I'm the one, because it's not like that. We are a team doing those wines and this is really great. You find a lot of wineries when the, the big boss is gone or the enologist, uh, they lose quality. I'm sure if you're into wine, you've seen this with, with some wineries the last 20 or 25 years and also some famous wineries and with Quintarelli, this never happened. In 2012, uh, unfortunately, Beppe Quintarelli died. Um, the, the guy who founded it or who made it that popular and that great. And two years afterwards, the knowledgeist died. So there was like a gap, but, and it was really, really, normally this would have been a problem, let's call it like this, but there were already two enologists behind him, following him, who were following him for years and knew already his techniques, his kind of working. So they were able to keep the quality stable. And this is for me something really, really, really interesting. And, and yeah, it's uh, impressive that, that they've kept the quality of such a great wine style. And I love it that they are not doing an international modern wine style, but keep it classical, do what they ever did, but in a good and proper way. So if you ever get the chance, get one, taste it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So thank you for listening. Hope you have a great evening. Enjoy the next week and keep on going. Thanks. Goodbye from my part, Sebastian from Wine Rieger in Germany. Thank you.